Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra deck guide. And it's been a minute since I've done these, so I'm very excited to share with you guys one today. Uh, the Yordalon Arms, uh, Fizz and Lulu deck. Now, this deck was not as impacted by the balance changes that we, we, ju we just had. Hence the reason why I'm going to share this with you guys today. It's a premium aggro deck. I think it's going to be one of the stronger aggro decks to go towards. And one that I'd recommend for you guys to climb with. So let's talk about it. The deck is pretty much built around, but not limited to, Yordle and Arms. This will give all allies plus two plus two this round. If you've summoned or cast cards from four plus regions, give allies plus four plus four. Which is quite reasonable to hit when you're playing uh, Bandle City. Because there's so many multi-region followers. It's not difficult at all to get that massive buff. We splash in Piltover and Zorn for a lot of cheap units and a lot of burst speed action with Poro Cannon. Boom Baboon and the Flame Chompers have a lot of kind of synergy. A couple of scrap heaps for discarding to find more value. And obviously having Lulu and Fizz to be your champions. Fizz now obviously... Fizz is just here for specifically splashing that Bilgewater region. Uh, Fizz isn't the real carrier for the deck, so just a quick tip, don't feel too bad about trading off fizz you don't need to go all in on fizz with this deck this is an aggro deck that goes wide swarms the board and beats down the opponent within this video i'm basically just going to go over the mulligan guide some the card summary obviously deck strategy and then probably have a couple of example games but mostly what i want you guys to take from this is just kind of the the words i share with you now not so much the gameplay the gameplay will kind of guide you through what cards to play and when roughly but just understanding like what the deck wants to do and the structure is going to be very important so let's uh, get on with it anyway and get through the card summary your Lord Arms is going to be your most expensive card in the deck, and it's pretty much where you cap out for your plays. You want to kind of be building towards these turns where you can get, like, as early as possible, your Lord Arms to go plus four, plus four, and swing the whole board. The earlier you can do it, the better. Sometimes you will go for plus two, plus twos. It's all going to be about situations. Uh, that makes sense like against a lot more heavier control decks you really want to aim for that plus four plus four and you really want to be ending games as soon as you can that way against some other faster tempo decks it might make sense for you to go for plus two plus two if you want to be fighting for the board more so just kind of be aware of the matchup and think about like how important that may be a couple of examples would be like a mirror matchup sometimes it does make sense to go for the plus two plus two sometimes it goes makes more sense to try and push damage uh, look at the board state, think about how much work you can get done, and sometimes plus two plus two is all that you need. Sorry for uh, repeating those numbers over and over, but just want to kind of state that you can play this uh, at not the full uh, value cost. Uh, Yordle Captain is going to be a three of in this deck. There's been a couple of situations where we've played less and more. Right now, with all the kind of like control decks coming back in, I would say three is going to be just perfect. And I would recommend that you play three. This is going to help you against like Shadow Isles and removal and stuff. And it's going to be very key for beating up on control decks. Uh, Lulu, fantastic champion here. The synergy Lulu brings with the Flame Chompers is ridiculous. Even a Daring Poros for some elusive burst damage just makes so much sense. Uh, your ability to get some... Uh, really, like, to, the ability for your opponent to, like, be outplayed by you, kind of having a little bit of mana spelled up, a little bit of mana banked up on turn three, and then to burst speed out of Flame Chompers can really swing the board in your favor dramatically, one of the most powerful uh, kind of combos in this deck. Triple get excited. It goes face. It trades off units. Uh, against slower control decks, going face makes sense, and some more faster tempo matchups, clearing board makes a little bit more sense. Look at the matchup, look at the board state, and kind of ask yourself, can I win the game through burn to face if I kind of make this sacrifice now? Or do I want to clear my opponent's misfortune to kind of drag out the game further, which would net in more damage overall? Triple Poke Stick, just a fantastic refuel card. Kill a small unit, draw a card. This card is like pretty much just a staple in almost any Bandal City deck, whether it's a fast or a slower deck. Doesn't matter, Poke Stick's ridiculous. Uh, Triple Mystic, this is one of the more recent additions and I think is kind of good shoutouts to, I think, uh, Trickster, sorry, may have been the player I saw doing this. To me, it made a lot of sense, uh, especially with the Bandle City Mare nerf. Even prior to that, we were cutting Mare. So again, this deck's kind of perfect. Uh, the nerfs and buffs didn't really affect the deck too much. Should still be a premium aggro deck. Mystic Shot can go face or clear board. Loping Telescope, fantastic for helping you get the Yol on Arms activated. One of the more premium cards for doing it with its ability to kind of get the Targon region, Bandle, and then sometimes find another region. Loping Telescope will make Yol on Arms activated very quickly. 
Uh, Flame Chompers is a three of, more discard synergy with Zornite, Scrap Heap, and Poro Cannon. Triple Flame Chompers, triple Boom Boom Boon. Boom Boom Boon's just a fantastic card for any discard deck. Should always be a three of, the three one stat line. Just premium for trading into premium for trading into significant units. Uh, Bomber Twins is three of. Get the Sharima region, sometimes get some decent landmarks that can do a fair bit of work. And if the landmarks suck, well then you can discard them. Uh, triple Zornite, probably one of the best PNC cards with any discard synergy, even not discard synergy. Uh, refuel, draw more cards. Quick tip, you don't have to discard cards with this. If you kind of like drag your cursor to the right and don't discard anything, kind of put it towards the blue with the play. And then you actually just don't discard a card. However, I'm going to say that I have only ever done that maybe 5% of the time, not even, even less in many different matchups. Uh, I think it's just more important. To, there's always going to be a good card to discard because you want to be drawing into other more premium cards. There'll always be a discard target. Just think about which card you won't need the most. Maybe you have double two drops like Boom Boom Boon and Bomber Twins. Bomber Twins could be a discard target. Or maybe you have double Boom Boom Boon. And sometimes there's even situations where you will not play Zornite turn one. Makes more sense against slower decks, uh, against faster decks, you just jam it. Uh, Scrap Heap is a 2 of, a more recent addition. Really like this inclusion. Again, I think Trickster was mucking around with this and I really liked it. Um, you can get some pretty crazy Mecha Yordles. I'm not sure if I can actually show them here, but lots of really good choices. Um, a lot of fun too. You can kind of like, your opponent can't really play around what you manifest and that's one of the beauty, beautiful things about manifesting as a mechanic is that it's going to provide you some game swings where your opponent was not ready for it. There's only two copies of it in this deck, specifically, once again, as I mentioned, trying to splash that extra region, and Fizz by itself is pretty good. Drawing multiple Fizzes, unironically, isn't that great. It's pretty hard for you to find value from Playful Trickster, and most of the time your Fizz will be dead, because you'll be trading or fighting for board with it, or your opponent may remove it somehow. Sometimes there is the option to draw double Fizz, and Playful Trickster can be another outplay, but again, as I said... Utilize Fizz to fight for board and think of it more of a, more as a follower than a champion. Uh, Poro Cannon is definitely going to be a three of, and that kind of wraps up the deck summary. So what I want to do next is I want to kind of go over some brief matchups and just kind of give you like some tips towards each matchup and how you can roughly approach it. Uh, obviously, it's pretty fresh metagame. We just had a balance patch, but a lot of the most popular decks are still going to remain the same, excluding a few new ones. I'm going to use the Runeterra AR website. Love this website. If you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. It's premium for if you just want to focus on your Runeterra information and want to get as much knowledge and just kind of be constantly updated. Uh, this is the place to go to. Now, we're just going to pretty much go for like the last, let's say, two days. Most of the decks are still going to be quite relevant. People are experimenting. Might be worth going to seven days, but we'll just do two days because it's probably where we're going to be for a while. Unless we have like any dramatic hot fixes to Iceborne Legacy. So against the Daring Poros, I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure you should be able to win it. If not, it's going to be 50-50. Like maybe they high roll multiple Iceborns, maybe they don't. And maybe you find an early order on arms with a wide board because most of the time you're not really going to be trading off the Daring Poros. There'll be situations where you can if you're kind of hitting your Flame Chompers and are able to trade them off early before they get too buffed. But at a certain point, if you don't beat them down fast enough, the Poros are going to be too massive and obviously they can't get the Poros down fast. I'm going to say you should still have a decent shot against these guys. Uh, similar to how the Rally decks are kind of targeting this deck right now. We can also just burn them down. Against Ari Kennen, this is actually not a bad matchup for you at all. The deck is obviously just generally very strong, so it's going to be close. But I am going to say that the Yule on Arms should have a decent chance at just beating down your opponent quickly. Again, it's not exactly going to be a favored matchup, but it's going to be close and it can go either way. Uh, at least Trundle, pretty much just like Shadow Wilds Control, should beat up on almost any aggro deck. This won't be a favorite matchup for you, but maybe you can find your Yolo Captain and your Yolo in Arms early enough with a wide enough board and try and just find that reach. Now, Shadow Wilds Control isn't as good as it used to be, so decks like these existing shouldn't be a reason for you not to play Yolo in Arms. I think it's still a really good deck, and with how kind of average slower control removal decks are now. Your on arms is just ridiculous still. Should be probably like 45-55. I think you can actually beat them almost on a coin flip. Uh, Senna Vigar, they're probably 
just going to beat you by the way. Oh, by the way, if you want to check out a really good Senna deck, Senna Viger deck, Darkness deck, um, there you go, that's me right there, hello. Uh, anyway, if piloted correctly, Senna Viger should always win. Uh, it's a much more cheaper removal based deck that deals with the Oils very fantastically. Unless they start to take the deck differently, uh, you should lose this matchup most of the time. Uh, Kindred Viego, uh, probably not going to be as favorable. Again, sometimes all you need to do is find that really strong, uh, oppressive opener. The thing about your own arms, as I haven't mentioned yet, is that it's a very high rolly deck. So you're going to have some hands that just beat up the opponent really quickly. And no matter what they're playing, it doesn't matter. Uh, however, they do have some pretty good tricks like Spirit's Refuge, Vile Feast. Pretty decent removal options, as well as the ability to kind of like build a board. So if you kind of like don't, if you don't get that wide board very early, very quickly, you're probably losing. Um, Elise, other aggro decks, it's going to be close. Um, I would say the Spiders variant. If we get a Lulu down, we get some Flame Chompers down, we trade off the board. It's really just a fight for board and their ability to like play combat tricks and weird challenger effects is limited where we have a lot more priority in being able to trade off board. So if you fight for board against spiders and end up finding Lulu and flame chompers or anything, any combination like that, you should be fine. Uh, Draven Rumble, uh, you should I'd be at a loss most of the time here. Um, unless they draw really poorly, you're probably going to lose because they can test your stats very well. They have the ability to go wide, cheat out some units over and over uh, that you just can't deal with. You have like almost an impossible time dealing with Rumble and Whirling Death and Might. So if you're having troubles against any auto decks, this is probably one of your more premium options. Uh, Lurk, I mean, it's going to be close. Your Lurk's Lurk. Lurk just high rolls sometimes. I'm going to say Yol and Arm should win most of the time unless they just have a ridiculously good high roll. Uh, if you play it right, you'll just win. Just go wide, play your own arms early, try and beat them down. If they find pike and stuff, it's not a lot you can do. So Loke has a decent shot, but it's really just a coin flip. And it seems like a lot of the decks these days, it is kind of just, you have a, you have a shot against almost any deck, realistically with any deck. That's a beautiful thing about Rune Terror. I think it's pretty good in its balancing and your ability to kind of like look for outplays exists in almost every matchup. So just try and be mindful and think about some ways you can outplay your opponent. And you might just find wins where you think otherwise would not have. Against Pantheon, well, I mean, if they get Pantheon flipped relatively early and find life still, you'll probably lose the game. So try and look for ways to smoke your opponent early. Hopefully they don't find the white flame. Um, you can always beat their like goat openers, uh, Saga Seeker, if they are playing it is a bit of a problem. Um, you can still find some value with Lulu and Flame Chompers early. Trade off one unit. If you can trade off one or two of the units early, you'll probably be able to find a win uh, with your Yolan Arms. And that's pretty much going to be it. I don't think we're going to go too much deeper down the list here because we're going to start to see a lot of stuff that you probably will not face too often. Uh, we won't go over just plain Elise Iceborne. It's pretty similar to the other deck. There's a few different variants of this Shadow Isles, Iceborne, whether it's Elise, Kindred, etc. It's always Elise, but the secondary champion varies. Uh, Lissandra Talia, you should be able to win this matchup. Uh, obviously, they play like a lot of removal, but we also play burn. So get excited and mystic shots over the top are going to be premium. If you find Lulu early, you'll be in a fantastic spot. Uh, Nivia should just beat us up. That's just removal city. We should have a difficult time against that deck. And anything else kind of relevant? Uh, GP Sejuani will be, will be GP favored. We don't see this deck very often. We're too slow these days. And yeah, there's a lot more matches here. I think once we go further down the list, realistically, these decks' performances aren't going to be that good. So don't worry about them too much. You'll probably just still always be like a 50% or above chance of winning if you play a deck well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the mulligan. Probably one of the most important things for helping you to kind of understand what you want to be looking for and how to play like the early game. The most early game move is the mulligan. So get the mulligan right. It's going to help you win more games. And one of the first things I want to say is that there's no clear cut mulligan. However, there is matchups where you want to be looking for specific cards. So let's talk about some of like the auto keeps that you'll probably keep 99.99% of the time. I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't, but there might be one that exists. I just don't personally know it. Boom Baboon is going to be one of the best cards all around. It will help you to stabilize the early game. 
as well as giving you some value with the flame chompers in hand for discarding later. Premium card on curve, just bomb, boom, boom, boom. Just go ahead and keep that card all the time. Another card is probably going to be Zornite as well. Zornite Urchin should probably always be kept, even if we haven't got stuff to discard directly, which makes sense, like Flame Chompers. Uh, there's going to be something to discard, and most of the time you do want to be discarding to draw. You can, if you want to, play this and not discard anything by dragging a little cursor to the right. However, I'm going to argue with you that there's always going to be some card to get rid of and some card to look for. You might have double two drops, double boom 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 in hand. You can go ahead and discard one of them, try and look for your all in arms or stuff to curve into later, Lulu as well. Or you might have the perfect like Zornite plus Flame Chompers discard early and obviously that makes a lot of sense. So in saying that, Zornite should be always kept, boom 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 should always be kept. If you have like Zornite, a boom and a Flame Chompers, even better, you can go ahead and keep those three cards. Zornite can discard Flame Chompers. If you're keeping a hand like that, Zornite, Boom, and Flame Chompers. Uh, maybe consider the last card, no matter what it is in hand, try and look for something more valuable. So get rid of whatever that card is, whether it's a Mystic or a Pokey, and look for like Yolo Captain or Lulu. However, if you are versing a more faster deck, that hand's perfect. If you have a Mystic Shot as well, even better. Probably want to keep it if you're trying to fight for the board against control decks, Pokey, Mystic Shot, and get excited won't make as much sense to keep. A lot of the time you won't be keeping removal as like an auto keep. It should always be considered and look at the matchup. If you're versing something where get excited you can find premium removal, uh, value on curve, maybe you're versing an MF deck and maybe you're playing in the mirror matchup. This should at least be considered to keep if the rest of the hand can allow it, which would be like, you know, a decent on curve plays if that makes sense. So be mindful of the matchup and keep removal when it makes sense uh, against control decks. We probably don't ever want to keep removal. Uh, Lulu. Should be kept as well. Um, a lot of the time, this is probably going to be more of a 75% keep. Uh, you do definitely want to draw into Lulu, but the thing about playing aggro decks is that you ideally always want to curve out. So keep the Zornite in the boom. If you haven't got Lulu, maybe try and fish for it with your last few, like last card that you kick. Hopefully you find it. And if you already have the curve and Lulu, that's a premium opener. Wow, lucky you. That's the hand that you want. Uh, keep your little captain's and your on arms probably 90% of the time won't be kept because unless you have the perfect curve which you won't always have don't keep them and even then um, usually you want to kind of be vomiting out your hand as fast as possible and then drawing into these later I will only keep your on arms in specific matchups by the way so this card pretty much always an auto kick unless you are versing late game control decks whether it's like S Shadow Wilds control and removal is a threat, or you're versing like uh, Lissandra Talia thralls and removal is a threat, try and cheese them very early with the Yolo and Arms. In saying that, Yolo Captain kind of is a similar situation. I'll keep this against super late game greedy control decks, and hopefully that can kind of like allow us to have a chance of winning against removal. Loping Telescope. Pretty good card to keep. Like we ha we haven't really mentioned Fizz, Loping Telescope, or Bomber Twins yet. Uh, these are like the other cards that we might keep. Ideally, we want Zornite and the Boom Baboon so we can kind of like utilize that value and have stuff to discard and draw through. But there's also going to be hands where maybe you have like a Fizz opener and a Bomber Twins, which also makes sense. You either want like the full discard synergy hand opener, or you kind of like want the cards that can give you value. So like Looping Telescope can give you value, Bomber Twins can give you some value, and if the landmark sucks that you find from this, you can go ahead and discard that. Uh, Fizz can pretty much always be kept as well, similar to Zornite. You just want these early game openers. Now that like a common question I might get from some people is like, well, what if I have like two one drops? Or what if I have like three two drops? You just want to keep one. If it's Boom Baboon, keep that. If it's Loping Telescope, keep that. If you have like a Boom Baboon and a Loping Telescope in the opening hand, um, you probably want to get rid of Loping Telescope. Unironically, unless we want to try and level up Yodel on Arms very quickly, because Loping Telescope is going to be one of the ways that you can level up Yodel on Arms the fastest. It will give you the Targon and Bandle, and then have a chance of finding you another region to make this get leveled up really quickly. Uh, telescope can be kept if and if we are versing like 
I'll just give you a random example. You're versing control decks, you're versing like darkness, you're versing uh, SI control, you're versing like some weird Viego splashes. Telescope is probably going to be a good keep because you probably want to get your own arms leveled up very quickly and then go from there. Uh, Scrap Heap probably doesn't ever really get kept. Ideally, your burst speed discard target would be poor a candidate to find that early and go from there. And that's kind of just a rough idea. There's no perfect way to mulligan and everyone kind of has their own style and their kind of beliefs in the mulligan. I just want to say that if you're playing a deck like this, you realistically just want to play on curve. One drop, two drop, three drop, whatever it might be, go ahead and keep them. Obviously Lulu is the only three drop. But yeah, that's kind of like roughly. If you have any other specific questions about the mulligan, go ahead and just leave them in the comments and I can try and like go through a few answers with you about that. But hopefully that gives you like a rough idea of like what to think about and how to proceed. Thanks guys. So that kind of like wraps up the summary. We'll go ahead and have a have a few games here. Uh, try and give you kind of like some visuals on how to like play cards and when. Uh, other than that, I want to say if you guys enjoy these deck guides and you want to see more, you know what to do. Subscribe, say hello, leave a comment, all that kind of good stuff. A like is muchly appreciated as well. My name is Fake Hero. You guys take care and I'll see you next time. Mystic's not bad keep. Um, I think we keep Fizz, Boom, Boom, Boom and Mystic. Uh, it's good for like faster matchups like this. We can get rid of a crucial unit. Sending a face is probably oftentimes never to play. So they most likely develop next turn. It'd be uncommon for them to actually open attack here. Very, very uncommon. If they do, I take the block though. I've never met anyone like you. So it looks like we'll probably be blocking with Fizz here. Back it up. Question is like, what do we block? Who shall we always just block like this? Okay, decent draw. Into a pretty decent draw there as well. Looking for trouble. It found you. What's the play here? Guess we'll just pokey stick here. And of course they don't block there. They want to keep the MF alive, right? Fresh out of mercy. Just an open attack. That is very good for us. Um. Let me think here. I don't know how much damage we can actually afford to take. We just won't take any damage. I think we might be able to outplay them here. Unless he's playing something wacky like Harpoon. This Yoda Captain should stick. Okay, we now have Mystic Shot value there, or some other shenanigans. Looking like a scrap heap. Try and find some cheap units. Um, perfect. We also have access to Mystic Shot too. And we can also buff the Flame Chompers. That thing is going to be able to trade quite effectively. Unless we want to clear GP. Else? <laughs> I don't think we want to clear GP, honestly. Who's 
with me. I think this is reasonable. They're obviously going to trade here. Never stop shooting. So yeah, I think we just Mystic shot the GP here. Play it safe. Or we could wait, because we don't want him to develop another GP. So we can wait. Hold up double Mystic on the stack. Triple Mystic. So there could be a make it rain here. Going down to nine scary, I don't think that's the play. Ah, maybe it is. If you place Noxium Fervor on the stack here, I will go for a Mystic. I'll go for a double Mystic here instead. This will mean that he can't really play another Noxian Fervor because our open attack would just be game winning. So a little bit of a bluff there, but ultimately I think it was a pretty decent line. Just to kind of throw my opponent off guard and make him realize that, oh, I was there's no real point to Noxian Fervor here because I'd be tapped out in mana. Then we could just open attack or do a lot of shenanigans. See, that's one of the more recent changes to the deck. I even... Uh, so Trickster Sorry had removed Banner City Mare to play Mystic Shots, or roughly, I'm not sure which specific card was taken out for Mystics, but he wasn't playing Mare, and this was before the nerf, so this deck's perfect because um, it was able to be like uh, adjusted for the patch quite well, and should still just be a very powerful uh, aggro deck. Elomant. Notoriously, we always verse each other at this time. Like you wouldn't believe. So this, this is going to be quite a difficult matchup to win, to be honest. Like the chances of us finding a victory here would require my allowance to draw pretty poorly or for us to high roll. And I guess uh, Fizz is going to be quite good. Flame Chompers, Telescope, Yolan Arms. Might be a full keep. However, we'll play it safe. Sometimes I keep Yolan Arms if I'm, if I'm feeling like I'm going to high roll. But for me to keep Yolan Arms, I'd have to get rid of Flame Chompers. But I think I like this. And we'll just get rid of Yolan Arms. We do play three copies. You'll probably find one by turn five, but... I'm banking on the fact that I think we'll draw back into it. Fizz can carry the early game quite a lot. Uh, seeing Zornite here is pretty sad. We can actually go Pora Cannon here instead. Use the Pora to block the Zornite. If he only if he only swings with the three two, then we block that. In this situation, we'll block there. So we'll try and play to the telescope value. See what kind of shenanigans shenanigans we can find. Alternatively, we have scrap heap. I don't exactly know what I want yet though, and this should always push two damage anyway. Um, moon silver, not too good here. We're going to need some form of value. Probably going to be. Unironically, could be Sithra, only because it's one mana cheaper. Shark Trainer, maybe, but that costs seven mana, plus you need more mana after that. Because you have to attune, you have to have one man uh, spell mana banked up to actually summon the Shark Tooth. So we're going to see Draven come down here. And we can consider get excited here, actually. If it's not Draven, then I guess we're kind of chilling. So he probably has Rumble. So 
So we have to block this. Play Fizz. Geo Mecha Forza. So Rumble comes down. I thought Rumble comes down. Wow, his hand must be super sus. Okay, well, as I said, like for us to win this matchup, things like this, exactly this, need to happen. I think I like the idea of buffing up. This kind of plays into Mystic Show a little bit more. This is probably safer for pushing more damage. This is, yeah, the most safest play I can make. Also, the the uh, Geode Mecha Forcer has uh, impact, I just realized. So I think we win now. Uh, for Rumble not to come down this turn is probably going to result in a loss. And for him to have not had Draven as well, also just as vicious. So none of these cards are playable. I think we want to keep Mystic and get excited for face. And next turn, yeah, next turn we're just going to slam Sithria. <laughs> the question is, is like, do we actually want to block here? And for the sake of like the random reach my opponent could find, it might be worth. Because I could lose to Noxian Fervor plus get excited. Because if I, if I want to develop Sithria next turn, I give my opponent an action. Um. This is actually a tough call. Sithria might not find us to win next turn. I don't want to play nothing this turn, right? Zornite theoretically pushes two damage anyway, so I think we should actually get rid of Mystic Shot here, come to think of it. Uh, Rally, kind of unplayable next turn. But we have options at least. Okay, I guess this is just a play, right? Try and force him to block with key units. Okay, so how is, what's the line here? How do we push maximum damage? Gonna be thinking about the fearsome here, right? So maybe we don't block do it like this. Maybe this is actually the line. Like, how does he actually deal with that many fearsomes? Nothing stands in our way. We buff like this, right? Obviously, Sithria is not fearsome. Still reasonable. This is probably the line. We're hoping to get at least... Well, hopefully we just kill him. Otherwise, because we're dead on the, on the swing back, right? 100%. Uh, Whirling Death can save him three damage, plus Mystic can save him a bit more damage. But 
but he should still be dead here. So yeah, I think this is really good ordering. Uh, I think it was important to use a spell shield on one of the three twos, not including Fizz, because he never goes for a spell on Fizz, so that was very good. Geode, Geode Mechananta kind of carrying this game. So yeah, unfortunately the only reason why I really won due to my opponent's poor draws, but we take those, especially on ladder when you're trying to climb up. GG. All right, Mikan. Uh, Poppy MF. I guess if they find MF on curve, it's a bit of a problem. Other than that, we might be fine. Uh, usually Zornite with Boom Boom Boom. These cards are really good to keep. Uh, Bomber Twins isn't as important. Our board becomes super susceptible to uh, make it rain, but that's not something that you really play around. So that's just double MF. Might keep Pokey. Deals with Fleet Feather. No, that's fine. This should be acceptable. We ideally just, you know, want to be finding Yodel Captain and Lulu, etc. So we can make our board even bigger than theirs. Yodel on arms. Should be able to end games pretty quick. So we usually do want to be discarding cards. So we're going to unironically discard probably Telescope. We want to keep double, like... <clears throat> We did probably want to consider that a little bit more, but we should be able to activate your own arms by the time it's relevant. Or just playing it as a um, plus two plus two is also fine. We always develop this turn. I don't think they main deck. I don't think they main deck make it rain. But we'll find out. I've got your back. Uh, we'll swing here. Swing's fine. We could push two or force a trade. Forcing the trade's probably fine. Okay, I guess he has MF in hand. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. So we might be playing yours and arms next turn. Try and push a fair bit of damage. So we're probably tanking seven this turn. Passing is also acceptable. Protect and strike. Now let's go ahead. Bombing out some cards. Yeah, we should definitely use one of these little arms now. And hopefully they haven't got a second. Hopefully there's no second MF in hand, because that's going to be really sad. And that is a second MF. It rolled pretty, pretty good, I guess. Never stop shooting. Couldn't have expected to get much better than that, really. Our next yellow on arms is going to probably be really strong. Uh, Bright Steel Protector would be a bit of a punish here. Probably put them down to seven here. That's good enough for me. I don't think we die in the next turn, so we're chilling. Fleet Feather is going to get good value. Unless we want to like... This get excited is probably going face. I think we're just trying to survive this turn the best we can. We just want cheap units, right? Charge is obviously probably a bit better. How much do we block here? I guess we can block here. Mm. 
Okay. So we're going to see a rally here without a doubt. Has to be an instant rally. Okay. And that's just to concede. I don't think they were theoretically dead there, but if they... We played that pretty atrociously. I don't think we we're actually supposed to discard the looping telescope in the early game. I wasn't considering how I was going to make yodels and arms have more significant damage in, on the buff, but uh, yeah, a bit of an awkward play is there. You know, the rally decks seem to be kind of popular at the moment. I think Fizz is going to be really good in this matchup, right? If we can find it. I don't think we keep yodel and arms or scrap heap. We'll keep telescope and Yodel Captain. No point to keep Scrap Heap because we ideally want to discard target. Perfect. Uh, the question is, do we go Zornite or Flame Chompers? Like, sorry, do we go Poro Cannon or Zornite? Zornite usually pushes more damage turn one. They never want to block with their Fleet Feather, so that's pretty much acceptable for us. If they don't have Fleet Feather, this game gets a lot easier. Unless they have MF, then that could be a bit of a problem. Um, Equinox can hit... Not a lot, really. We can hit some challenges. It's obviously going to be the pickup here. We can develop Bomber Twins. This is actually really good. Grant the strongest ally, plus two. We maybe don't want to discard that. Yeah, let's go ahead and try and smoke him down here. This looks like we're just going to go for the smoke strat. Flame chompers can drag the 3-4. Uh, looks pretty good to me. This is like the MF turn, right? Looking for trouble. What would be the best play here? I think we want to jam Yodel Captain. Follow me. I know where I'm going. Yeah, so that's going to get pretty good value. I kind of forgot about the blinding assault inclusions. So this is going to clear board. That's fine. So, we're going to start with Telescope here. Maybe the Aloof Travelers. Bandle Tree could give us some sort of weird win con, but I don't think that's a choice. We want to go a bit faster. We'll take Aloof. If he goes for a rally here, we'll hold up Equinox. Okay, Poro Cannon. Welcome to the team. Well, just do your best, okay? Soldiers to me. So assuming opponents got sharp sight. I wonder how much we really want to trade here. I don't think we want to go in any further than just this. Definitely going to see a sharp side here. 
If not, we might be chilling. Guess we have to Equinox this now. To, to try and deny the MF flip. Or at least to make Fort Demacia a bit weaker. Looking for stun. Didn't find it. Unlucky. Their pride will cost them. So we'll take the uh, smash and dash. Pretty much losing our entire board here. seem to go on for a lot longer than I thought it should. So we have some good outs here. We can finally get excited. It's a very bad draw here. If he doesn't have sharp side, it's just lethal. Um, wow, just to concede, just straight up. Maybe they don't play sharp side. Or rally? So the impact still strikes right, so that was quite lucky for us. Wow, Yodel's an arm. So this deck still slaps. Very good aggro deck. I think this would be like the deck I would recommend to a lot of people if they want to like pick up a new aggro deck that's probably going to net you good results.